This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about the fact that in the state of Maryland, contributory negligence is still an effective defense. And reference to the defendant's need to pay is not an inappropriate mention of insurance. When I was a young adjuster 55 years ago, California and every state allowed a plaintiff's contributory negligence, no matter how small, to defeat negligence claims. In 1975, the California Supreme Court issued a case called Lee v. Yellow Cab, a decision of the California Supreme Court that established the system of contributory negligence that has been followed in most states. Maryland, however, still applies contributory negligence and has refused to adopt comparative negligence. In Michael Lewis v. Pedro Romero, a decision of the Court of Special Appeals on October 10, 2023, the court dealt with the fact that Mr. Lewis lost his negligence action against Mr. Romero, whose vehicle struck pedestrian Mr. Lewis in a bank parking lot. Michael Lewis sued Pedro Romero for negligence. Ultimately, the jury found that while Romero was negligent, Lewis was contributorily negligent, and that barred Lewis from recovering damages. The incident occurred on October 9, 2019, outside of Capital One Bank in Frederick, Maryland. The bank has two points of access for vehicles. There is a one-way single-lane road spanning the perimeter of the bank with painted one-way arrows. This road does not have any crosswalks. Both parties agreed that on the date of the incident, Romero was driving a pickup truck on the one-way road around the perimeter of the bank when he struck Lewis, a pedestrian, who was exiting the bank. Lewis testified that he walked on foot from a nearby hotel where he was staying to the bank in order to withdraw money. Lewis admitted that at the time of the impact, his cell phone was in his hand. However, Lewis denied that he was talking on the phone at the time he was struck by Romero's vehicle. On the issue of contributory negligence, in Maryland, when measuring contributory negligence, the standard of care is the conduct of an ordinarily prudent person under circumstances ordinary. The court found that Romero met their burden of production regarding contributory negligence, and that is that Romero had introduced more than a mere scintilla of evidence measuring more than a surmised possibility or conjecture that Lewis had been guilty of negligence and that Romero generated a jury issue. During closing argument, after discussing Lewis's alleged damages, Romero's counsel stated, quote, Lewis is asking you to award him money damages for the choices he made. He wants Mr. Romero to pay him for some of these choices. Close quote. The court denied Lewis's motion for mistrial. The jury returned a verdict, finding that while Romero was negligent, Lewis was contributorily mm. negligent, barring Lewis from any recovery. Maryland follows the majority rule that evidence of insurance on the part of a defendant is generally inadmissible. The Supreme Court of Maryland has also held that a mere inference that there may be insurance would not necessarily require a termination of the trial. Romero's counsel made an ambiguous comment during closing argument that Lewis wanted, quote, Romero to pay him for some of his choices, close quote. There is nothing in the record and was nothing in the record to suggest that the comment surpassed the threshold of being an improper statement that warranted further consideration. So, what is contributory negligence? Contributory negligence occurs whenever the injured person acts or fails to act 
in a manner consistent with the knowledge or appreciation actual or implied of the danger or injury that his or her conduct involves contributory negligence is defined as the doing of something that a person of ordinary prudence would not do or the failure to do something that a person of ordinary prudence would do under the circumstances the question of whether the plaintiff has been contributorily negligent is ordinarily for a jury to decide. To find contributory negligence as a matter of law, the injured party's action must be distinctive, prominent, and decisive from which reasonable minds would not differ as to the negligent character. The case was properly submitted to the jury because even when viewing the facts in light most favorable to Lewis, the evidence established his contributory negligence amounted to more than surmise, possibility, or conjecture. Lewis's decision to leave the sidewalk and walk midway into the road while glancing for oncoming traffic constituted a distinctive, prominent, and decisive decision from which the jury could find that Lewis was contributorily negligent. Notably, Lewis's testimony that he was hit from behind on a one-way road indicates he was facing away from oncoming traffic and not looking for vehicles coming in his direction. Upon these facts, the appellate court concluded that the trial court properly submitted the question of contributory negligence to the jury, and they found that Lewis was in fact contributory negligent. The application, in my opinion, of contributory negligence as an absolute defense to a negligence cause of action is considered in most states to be draconian and that comparative negligence is more fair and more reasonable. Maryland is in a minority. That Maryland continues to apply the common law is appropriate, and since the jury found both parties to be negligent, Mr. Lewis recovered nothing from his suit. If the same accident had occurred in a state like California applies comparative negligence, Mr. Lewis probably would have recovered something, not his full damages, but a major da percentage of his full damages. The law must be applied as it exists in the state, and since it is contributory negligence is a defense in Maryland, it must be and was applied. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog. And you can subscribe to the blog and receive notice of every blog posting, usually five, sometimes six a week. And you'll receive access to the more than 4,600 blog posts postings and the hundreds of videos and you can also subscribe to the videos at youtube and at rumble.com and if you do i'd appreciate it if you click on the like button at youtube and the thumbs up button at rumble and if you're interested in more detail about insurance insurance claims insurance law and insurance fraud please consider subscribing for a very small fee to my Substack publications or my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.